Hello guys, I welcome you all to the second part of Graph API tutorial. So far we have seen different methods of connecting to Graph API using Graph Explorer and PowerShell SDK. Next we will talk about connecting to Graph using something called Client Credential Flow. In Client Credential Flow, we are required to register an application also known as a service principle. Next we will create a client secret, then we will apply some permissions on the application itself like user.read.all or write.all or any other permissions that we have discussed in the part one right so with these applications uh, the client credential flow will work independent of any user credential instead it will use the secret and use the for authentication and the application permissions for authorization and will get you the desired result or whatever task we are trying to perform once we have all these things, we can use client secret to connect to the graph API. So we'll start by registering the application. Here I am on my app registrations in Azure AD. I'll click on new registration and uh, give this application a name. Let's say graph API test. Then I need to select uh, accounts in this organizational directory only because I have only single tenant and I do not intend to use this application on multiple tenants. In redirect UI, we can just use web and uh, I will just keep it as HTTP and localhost as the URL. This is obviously, uh, let's say that if you have a working application that you are registering with Azure AD and after authentication, uh, you need to redirect user to a particular you know, URL. Once the authentication is successful, then you will use this, you know, a particular URL or a redirect URI for a production environment. But here we are only registering an application for the sake of Graph API. So you don't need to have a actual URL here because you are, the user will not be redirecting anywhere, right? we just need to authenticate so i click on register now this application has been registered okay one thing we will do is we will create a client secret in order to get the api token or a token to connect to the graph api so i will just you name it as graph secret and uh, let's say uh, expires this is the validity i will select six months for our tutorial and i will click on add Make sure to copy the value of this uh, secret once you refresh or go to any other option because this value is only will be only seen once okay it, uh, the, uh, the portal will not show you the value again so i'll just copy it and uh, paste it in a notepad here okay now for connecting to graph api using client credential flow we will need other details like client id okay we will also need tenant id so this is my tenant id this is my client id or app id and this is the secret that we will use now with powershell uh, if you want to like connect to any uh, api using powershell there is a command called invoke dash rest method okay we will use this commandlet in order to connect to graph api or get the access token so let me just open eyes here okay so here i am on the uh, windows powershell ice and uh, this is basically the body in which we will use uh, we will pass in the invoke dash rest method commandlet so if you remember i just told you that we with powershell we can call any api using this commandlet called invoke dash rest method right so here, uh, this is what we are doing and by calling any api we need to pass something in the body so in the in the details we will pass client id the scope which will be default so scope is uh, similar to uh, like you know what what we have used so far like user.read.all or directory.read or write.all but here we will use default because we will directly uh, we will be directly applying the permissions on the application itself 
so here we can just define default here okay and if you remember this is the end point on which microsoft graph works graph.microsoft.com one end point to get all the details for every workload right one ring to rule them all <laughs> so just a lot of the rings reference here so this is one end point to get all the uh, to work with all the workloads right here will i will be defining the client secret and grant type will be client credentials because this is a client credential flow okay it's not a user credential flow this client credential flow i will start by replacing our details here so first i let me paste client secret then i will use client id then tenant id as well okay now i have all these details let me just uh, run it and load it in the memory okay it is loaded in the memory now i will run this commandlet in order to get a uh, token basically right invoke dash rest method now in the uri i have defined the authentication url for microsoft login.microsoftonline.com i am passing the tenant id and i am using auth 2.0 to get the token so this is actually the endpoint okay if i go to the this is the authorization endpoint okay if i click on the endpoints here under this application i can find all the endpoints that i need to use so here we are using oauth authorization endpoint v2 i'm sorry we are using oauth 2.0 token endpoint right in order to get the token so we are using this okay so let me get back to powershell ice and uh, method will be post body i'm passing the body parameter here and the content type will be sorry content type will be application okay now let's run the line number 15 and see if we are getting a token or not i'll run this now okay let's see what token response variable has as we can see we have the access token now before we go ahead and uh, connect to graph api I want you to focus on line number 17. Recently, Microsoft made a change that, uh, which says that, you know, you cannot use a token in plain text to connect to Graph API. You need to convert it to a secure string, okay? So if I just, uh, you know, use access token here, uh, sorry, token response variable here, which has the token in, uh, uh, you know, in uh, plain text, right? Then it should not work. Let's see. Okay, so I'm using uh, access token, which is in plain text. Let's connect to graph here. Now it says there is some error. Let's see what the error is. Cannot convert. Okay, see, this is the token it's giving, but the important part is it's it was not able to convert this uh, token, access token into a secure string. If you just, uh, focus on this part system.security.secure string so what we need to do we need to convert this into a secure string okay so line number 17 i will remove this part and i will use a access token which is secure so this is the secured access token here okay so convert to secure string is a secure access token and if you see token response here um, uh, using the method convert to secure string um, converting this access token here as a plain text okay so this will be a secured access token okay, let's run line number 17 if we see what access token has it should be a secure string see now let's connect to the microsoft graph okay now, as you can see we were able to connect to microsoft graph here now let's try to get some uh, details. Let's say if I try to get a list of some users, then it should give me some error. Let's see. So if I run this line number 21, okay, uh, need to remove this row here. Okay, let's run this. See, I'm getting some error which says uh, insufficient privileges. 
now i will go back to our azure ad portal and under this app graph api test we will go to api permissions in this api permissions you will find two types of uh, permissions one is a user delegated permission another one is application permission now if i click on add a permission right by the way you might see that the default is there user dot read which is a delegated permission it's there by default once you register any application here okay i will click on add a permission then click on microsoft dot graph here you will find two permissions delegated and application okay so if i use delegated permissions okay i would still need to authenticate my user okay i will need to provide the user uh, id and the password in order to use this delegated permission so in a way this application will work but it will work on behalf of the authenticated user okay now if you want your application or your script to run independent of this delegated permissions what you will choose is application permissions okay now let's see if you scroll down uh, there are a lot of permissions that you, you can utilize we have gone through it uh, like similar kind of permissions in uh, tutorial number 1 now let's see what we can find for user uh, okay under user i will say user dot read dot all if i add the permissions like this i should be able to uh, you know read all uh, users profiles so right now it's applied but it's not granted so an admin has to click on this grant admin consent and then yeah that should work so let's go back to our uh, uh, powershell and uh, i'll try to run this 21 again again i error okay so which means that you know we will have to uh, reauthenticate why because see this token contains uh, permissions so there are two parts to it authentication and authorization so this uh, token will contain scopes also okay so what we need to do is we need to disconnect the graph okay so i will disconnect ng graph i'll run this okay it's disconnected and then what i'll do i'll try to get a new token connect also at the same time i'll run this whole part now let's try to get the mg users now okay now as you can see since we applied the permissions on the application we were able to get the list of users okay so that is how you can apply application permissions and use it in your token connect to mg graph and get the output you want now let's just create a simple licensing script with which will get you all the unlicensed users and also the sku part number of the licensed users later we will also use graph api to send an email out let's begin so i'm back on my powershell i'll just uh, use uh, get dash mg user i will put it in a variable let's say users okay and then uh, we need certain properties i'm mostly interested in the id of the user and uh, maybe the user principal name it's not needed but let's see uh, principal name we might want this in the uh, in the excel that we will be exporting so i think these two are sufficient for the sake of uh, our demo and i'm going to select these properties as well now okay let's try to run this make sure that it's uh, we are not receiving any errors okay so we have this information now okay now since we have all the users here we can use a for each loop for each loop and uh, iterate over every uh, id or users right right so what i'm going to do is just uh, write a comment here get sku part number okay
I'm using the variable which will store the user license. So there's a command called get dash mg license. I'm hitting a tab, it's not coming up. So let's see mg user license. Yeah. So this is the commandlet mg user license detail that we can use to get the licensing information about the user. Okay. It requires a parameter called user ID. And uh, what we will do is we will just use user.id here because we are already exporting the ID in our uh, 23 commandlet, right? We are selecting that as a property. Okay, once uh, this is done, what we can do, we can check uh, whether the user has a license or not, okay? So check if uh, the user has license. Okay, now what we can do is we can use a if condition and uh, by the way I'm using ICE, you can use Visual Studio Code but just for the sake of simplicity I'm using ICE because some of the uh, viewers might not be familiar with the Visual Studio Code but they uh, there's a higher chance that they know PowerShell or PowerShell ISE. So that's why. Okay, so just wanted to point that out. What we can do is if user license right, is uh, greater than, uh, let's say this user.count, right? I'll explain that bit. And if it equals zero, okay? Then I'm gonna store this information in a separate custom object. So what this basically do, uh, doing is that once it will run user license, okay, it should get some information. Let's say that user doesn't have a license, then the count of that object, right, under user license, the count of any object will be zero. Basically, there will be no object there. So if it equals to zero, then the user is unlicensed and I can have some details here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, create a uh, PS custom object. Let's say license uh, details and uh, I'm, I'll use a store everything or all the attributes that I want or properties I want in a PS custom object. And uh, it's to create our PS custom object here first. Okay, now the information that I will be uh, storing in Excel will be maybe the display name and uh, and the license whether it's uh, you know unassigned or maybe the uh, SKU part number. Okay, license name. So what we can do is first uh, let's say that I need the user principal name. So I will just use UPN equals to user dot user user principal name i'll just copy this from here okay i have this and uh, i'll say license name and that will be equal to let's say i'm storing a string here it says unlicensed licensed okay unlicensed because the count is zero and uh, i'm just hard coding this value here Okay, now this is this is my if condition and my PS custom object. Similarly, what we can do is we can use a else a condition where what we will do is we will say because see if the user count user license count will be zero, this will be executed. But if this condition is not satisfied, which means that count is not equals to zero, or it's a uh, you know greater than one basically then what uh, greater than zero basically what will happen that anything inside else will be executed so we will just have our same ps custom object here but we will change a few things okay so user principal name we need this will remain the same but uh, what we need is the license name under license name we need the sku part number so uh, what we can do is we can have a user license and then dot sku part number 
okay so with else condition this will be executed and we will have our ps custom object now since we have all this ps custom object we we also want to store this in a array so what we will do we will also define a array here which will store everything so uh, i can name it as license uh, report and i can need to define this in array so this should be it okay uh, right now after the ps custom object i need to store this information so under if we have this we have this okay right so below this i need to make sure this everything is stored here okay so i'm not closing this now i am and uh, once this uh, ps custom object is executed for every user right for every entry entry uh, this will be executed and whatever the result will be i need to store that in a array so i will what will use license report plus equals to license details so what this is doing plus equals to what this is doing is so let's say that ps custom object has one entry okay what will happen is this license report is an array and this will keep on adding every detail that will come up for every iteration so let's say it's user number 1 it is unlicensed right this will be executed and for license report this will be stored under it okay similarly if the else condition is met then this will be executed and we need to store whatever in there in ps custom object in a array so this will be same array that we will use for licensed and unlicensed user plus equals to license details so plus equals to is just making sure that it is not updating it is only adding things to the array okay <clears throat> all right so we have everything that we needed what we can do is we can uh, export this Uh, license report in a csv okay but uh, for the time being what we can do is we can just do this out dash grid view that will give us uh, the out grid view of uh, of the uh, details or the report that we got okay so i'll rerun this part again it is executing okay so as you can see we have the details that we wanted we have the sku part number for the licensed user for unlicensed user we have license name as unlicensed okay hope that was clear now if we were to export this into a csv we can do that as well by using export dash csv commandlet and uh, give it a name give it a path let's say c uh, users public and then uh license dot csv and uh, no type information so let's run this part okay let's try to open this okay this csv all right see we got what we wanted uh this system dot object is coming because we did not use the join operator okay we can fix that uh, so let's say that uh, when you have uh, multiple uh, objects right comma separated values so when when we used the outgrid view okay i'll explain this so when we use the outgrid view you might see that under there are multiple licenses right there are comma separated values so uh, in csv they will be uh, shown as system dot object we can fix that by uh using i guess the join operator and uh, we can separate it the, them by comma i'm sorry the the comma now let's just get rid of this and i will we'll try to run this again uh let's do a force so that it replaces the or uh, updates the uh original file 
basically it will replace uh, okay run okay let's try to open this again as you can see we fix that issue okay i can see comma separated uh, licenses names here okay so that's how you can create a, a simple normal script uh, with the graph uh, api uh, this is not a very uh, you know big script because see this is not a tutorial for the scripting but i just wanted to show you that how you can uh, you know find your own ways and work around with graph to create your script and you know uh, build something uh, meaningful as per your uh, use cases so now that we have uh, our reporting script let's see how we can use graph api to send out an email okay so to send out an email what you will need is you will need a uh, mailbox using which you can send out an email so i'll pick let's say uh, blake lively's mailbox uh, okay i'll use that and uh, we will need some permissions called send dot mail. We will also require. We are also required to install a uh, a module that 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 we will do shortly. All right, let's move on to sending an email using graph. This requires installing a module Microsoft dot graph users dot actions. Then we will also try to send an email using an attachment. First, let's start with installing the module. So I have opened PowerShell as an administrator. What I'll do is I'll try to install this module. All right, so the module was successfully installed. Next, we need to give uh, permissions to this application in order to send an email. So I'll add a permission here. Let's uh, go down to mail and uh, mail.send. This is the permission that we need to use. Now notice that it says send mail as any user, which means that if I give this permission, this application can send email to any as a, any user. Okay. So we don't want that. Next, we will see how we can restrict this permission to a particular mailbox. For now, I'll just apply this permission. Okay, let's grant this accent. So consent is given. Next, what I'll do is I'll try to uh, restrict this to the uh, mailbox that we want. Okay, for this we need to connect to Exchange Online uh, module. If you haven't installed this, you need to install Exchange Online Management. I can show you that. I have already installed it. Exchange online manage. See, so this is the model that will you will need to install. Next, let's connect this uh, connect our machine to Exchange online. All right, I'm connected to my Exchange online. Uh, module and uh, let's see all the mailboxes that I have currently so what I want to use is I want to use uh, Blake Lively's uh, mailbox uh, okay so for this there is a commandlet called a uh, new dash application access policy okay you can read more about this policy if we just google it okay so see this says that this application commandlet is used to restrict or deny access to a specific set of mailboxes by any application that uses apis like microsoft graph okay so we can restrict this to a particular mailbox right now what permission the permissions we have given is uh, is such is, is like that it can use any mail so in in case that somebody 
gets uh, access to your client secret then he or she can use your client secret and send out email with any mailbox okay so it's very important to restrict it <clears throat> so you can also read more about this what we need to do we don't we don't want to deny we need we need to restrict this right so we will use this restrict uh, uh, restrict example what i can do is i can just copy this commandlet here paste it uh, in my powershell which is being running as an administrator and uh, with the application id i can replace it with my application id i have it right here so basically what i'm saying is uh, what i'm telling this application is that just restrict the mail sending permission to this particular mailbox for this particular app okay this is that and uh, policy group id under policy group id uh, is it correct no seven seven yeah, it's correct under policy group id i can replace this with my mailbox I don't know the mailbox. Okay, uh, I think uh, I think it's this Blake at Roman dot tk. Restrict this app access to members. No, it's not a security group. I'm just using the mailbox itself. I don't actually remember. We might need to give the group ID here because it says the group ID. Is there any other way? Let's find out if we can just define the mailbox itself. <clears throat> recipient, it just says recipient ID parameter. So I think it should work. If, uh, let's try to, so they are using, okay, okay. The policy group ID parameter specify the recipient to define the policy, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Valid recipient types, security principles, users or groups, including nested groups. Okay, so it says users, right? So it should be okay. All right, so let's take this app access to Blake. Balki, Blake. <clears throat> Enter. okay this worked all right so now we cannot use this application to send out email uh, using other mailboxes and other than blake library pretty cool right okay so now let's uh, go back to ice and uh, continue with our script now for sending out email uh, graph provides a commandlet called send dash mg user mail okay and uh, if you see it only accepts uh, uh, json format okay the request body is need, needs to be either in json or mine format also the attachment should be in a json right and uh, if you see uh, we can uh, you know go through some examples see it requires module and then we need to define some parameters and then at the end of uh, this uh, little script we need to use this commandlet pass in our body parameter and it should work but talking about the attachments right they have not provided much information other than yes the attachment needs to be in uh, in you know uh, in a json format or it ex it only accepts that in a json so uh, i did some research on that what you can do is you can pass the attachment as a base64 uh, string right uh, base 64 string is a uh, is a format which securely transfers you know your data your binary data when you are using or passing some data to the api so that's why we need to use our you see this uh, you see this attachments uh, uh, attach, attachments array now here if you see uh we have this thing content bytes and if you see this content bytes right this will be in a base 64 format okay base 64 string format 
and this this will be included in this attachment dot txt file. So you have two options. You get the data, you get the report, and uh, in in that report or in the script itself, you you convert the uh, your output in a base sixty four bytes of data, and then pass that in this attachments and send it out. So we will try that. Next, let's say that you also have a locally stored file. What you can do? Read the data using the command let get dash content, and then convert that into base sixty four, and then send out the email. Let's see that in action now. Okay. So what I'll do? I'll copy this uh, params here. Okay. In our script. because we don't have much time uh, that, that much amount of time to write everything i'll say i'll just make changes here quickly i'll say uh, sku uh, sku report uh, content type i'll change the content i'll say your MFA oh sorry not MFA SKU license report is ready please review okay now uh, we need to pass the content bytes here okay whatever we are getting in license report okay we need to pass that as a base sixty four format because graph API or any API for that matter. Only accepts base sixty four uh, binary data for traversing it from one place to another. Uh, so what we will do is we need to convert this uh, array into a base sixty four. Okay, let's do that now. Okay, uh, I did not define the parameter user ID because uh, it just says from which email address you want to send out the email. So I'll use Blake at Raman dot tk. Send it now. could not load the assembly uh okay so see uh, uh, since we are going through it bit by bit right loading everything in the memory we will actually need to disconnect graph because we applied a new permission mail dot send and uh, that token the currently we have it doesn't have that scope or permission so i'll disconnect mg graph next i will remove this attachment type from a text file to a csv i will say sku report dot csv this will be the name of my attachment so uh, i can see my the email address that i need to send email to and then i can also see the name of the attachment i am uh, using a uh, base64 data in content bytes that will be uh, saved in the sku report csv and i have the subject here and the body also the email body now i can just use my email uh, my command let in graphs and dash ng user mail and uh, give the user id this user id will be the from address in the email okay now i can say body parameter and i can include my params here let me save and run this whole script again Okay, so it got ran successfully. Let's see if we get any new email. Okay, I have got a new email here, and I can see my SKU report. I can see my body of the email, and I have the attachment also. Now, what you can do is, if you are running some automation or something like that, you can use the exact exact method which I use in order to convert the uh, data. or the uh, you know custom object data to a base 64 type of uh, you know uh, uh, bytes and then use that string uh, in the content bytes and just send out an email please remember that graph api only accepts base 64 as a attachment so make sure that you convert that i hope that you were able to understand graph api and there are a lot of more things that you can learn on your own 
uh, my thing was to give you a broad idea about what it is and how you can make it work and my focus was to give basic understanding of uh, graph api to system administrators i hope that i was able to provide you with new information and i will see you in the next video please show some love and subscribe to my channel